If you're ready to experience more peace and joy in your life, if you want to feel more comfortable in your own skin, and if you're ready to discover and expand on your energetic gifts and personal power, you're in the right place. So here's your host, Kelly Sparta. Welcome back to Spirit Guides. This is our Align Wednesdays. I'm your host, Kelly Sparta, and I am... So excited to be here as per usual with my lovely best friend in Bocate and fellow transformational coach, it's transformational business coach, spiritual coach, Catherine Loranger, which she, just, <laughs> she fixed it. Evidently, nailed it, it nailed it. Freaking it. years. <laughs> Nailed it, nailed it. <laughs> You're gonna have to remind me next time too. But that's, well, that's okay. okay. That's okay. It's group for two years, man. You just should have fixed it earlier. <laughs> you've never, that but you've stuck. never really said my last name before. Like that's the first true. time I've heard you say it is on the podcast. And I would be like, oh, like the pronunciation's not quite right, but we're recording right now. So I'm not gonna like say anything about it now. So yeah. it's not okay. So for all of you listeners. It's not that it's like I've got multiple personalities. That's not, <laughs> that's not what's happened here. It's the same person. Spoiler alert. For today, anyway. <laughs> okay, then. All right. Well, and this is really appropriate for today's topic, which is fear of failure, right? So we fear failure a lot because we are afraid to be embarrassed, humiliated, you know, said that we're wrong or that we're useless or that we're worthless or, you know, all these things and making a mistake like that on your best friend's name <laughs> is, is one ah. thing that people could get really upset about. And, and the beauty of having done so much work on myself is I'm like, yeah, I screwed up. And here I'm even going to out myself on the air. So you guys can understand why I changed the name <laughs> pronunciation is because, you know, it is what it is, right? And it that's the that's the real key for fear of failure is to to embrace failure as a step on the process to success, right? Because you know, it, it's funny. I when I was like 17, 18 years old, I was reading the autobiographies of millionaires. And the one thing that I took to heart out of all the things that I read, there were a bunch of things that I read, a lot of things that I learned, but the one thing that was most insightful for me was that the average millionaire goes broke, goes bankrupt twice before they make their millions. And I was like, oh, oh, well, then failure isn't such a bad thing because that is clearly failure. Bankruptcy is failure on a financial level, right? And yet they turned around and came back from it twice, right? Before making their millions. And so this is one of those pieces that when you really dig into it, you start to understand that failure isn't the end unless you give up, mm -hmm. right? Failure is mm -hmm. not the end unless you stop trying, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? So, you know, this is one of those pieces that you have to look at and say, well, what's the worst that could happen? Because we often do that anyway. We, we awfulize. We're like, oh, blah, blah, right? And the worst that could happen is you fail, right? It, it doesn't work. It flops you down, you end up financially bankrupt, maybe, or emotionally exhausted or embarrassed or whatever. Okay. So what? That's well, the question I you can ask. You know, yeah. I think a lot, a lot of people, if fear of failure is, is a thing for them, that there's this idea that they've tied their self-worth to their, or their value or their identity yeah. to the outcome so fear of failure is not, and yes, like failure is simply feedback, but it's a choice to see it that way. Whereas if you've tied your identity to the outcome, then failure is, it's, it's truly is catastrophic, right? Like it's like identity um, destroying or shattering. And yeah. so I think if, if that's the case, what can happen is you can get stuck in paralysis yeah. because you're so afraid to fail that you don't even sometimes get started. Well, and this is, that's a, such a great point because I talk to people about this all the time. I'm like, look, 
your business is a baby when you're just getting it started, right? And when you put the weight of your self-worth on top of the baby, it, you crush it, right? It, it literally can't hold the weight. And so, you know, it's super important not to do that, both for the baby and for you, because one, if your self-worth is on the business, then the fear of failure thing, it becomes massive, right? And the, the baby business can't hold that. It's just like, whoa, I gotta like make you feel good about yourself. And ah, you know, there's all this stuff and the business is limping along because it's holding on to this self-worth piece Mm -hmm. and it's, it's just dragging it down. And so energetically it is a big problem. Well, and I think to you, you, you know, if your failure is a thing for you, then you've set up some unrealistic expectations for yourself and your business. This idea that it's got to be perfect, or you've got to have it figured out right away, or you can't make mistakes, but mistakes are actually how you learn, right? Like Thomas Edison, when asked, you know, how many times he failed that crit before he created incandescent light bulb, he said, and it was 10,000 times. He said, I didn't fail 10,000 times. I got 10,000 pieces of feedback about how it didn't work. Yeah. Yeah. I mm-hmm. found 10,000 ways not to make a light bulb, right? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Like, look, I discovered 10,000 ways not to do this, right? right? Yeah. I'm amazing. I'm amazing. I'm, I'm a rock awesome. star. <laughs> yeah. Well, and yeah. it's so interesting. I was watching a TikTok the other day. I love TikTok. And I was watching this video of this couple and he's neurotypical and she's neurodivergent and he was saying, you know, when I do something and I complete it, I have a little happy dance and I feel good about myself. I have all this mm-hmm. dopamine hit from having completed it. And she looked at him like he was nuts. And she was like, what are you talking about? And she said, you know, when I finish something, I just go, oh my God, there's so many more things to do. <laughs> and it's mm-hmm. like, yeah, okay. So, mm-hmm. you know, I don't know if she's neurodivergent or if she's got trauma in her background, but you know, for those of us who were never given any kudos for anything we completed, that is something that we will internalize and we will feel like, oh, you know, I don't get to celebrate my successes. And this is one oh. of the things that I work on with people in the Welcome to the Woo oh. program is this, this very thing. And oh. it is the most resisted exercise out of every exercise we do in that program is the thing that I do to fix that, which is, uh, you know, it's, it's crazy that people, you know, they need it but they don't actually do it. You know, even one of my people who's trained to be a coach in my programs, he, he waited until the second program to actually do that exercise. And he's like, yeah, I really didn't want to do it. And I'm like, yeah, well, he's like, yeah, but it was really awesome when I did it. I'm like, yeah, I know. So that's why I told you to do it. But these are, these are the pieces that, that, you know, when we are doing things that go counter to our childhood programming, we resist a lot. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the resistance is real, man. And, and multiple, you know, multiple forms of resistance and different ways of doing it and different ways of ignoring that you're doing it and, for, and forgetting that you did it, and, you know, all the things, right? We mm-hmm. think, oh, I'm working so hard, but then we like put all the, the blinders on and the resistance arms in the doorway going, I'm not going through, but we're running at the doorway and pushing at the frame at the same time and going, I'm trying so hard. It's like, "Mm." yeah, but you haven't addressed the resistance. Right. Mm -hmm. And so that's the, that's the challenge. So if you feel like you're stuck, you're probably in that resistance pattern of holding the edges of the door frame and running at the door and pushing back at the same time, Mm -hmm. because that's often what happens, but back to fear of failure. So yeah, you, you look like you have something to say. Oh, I totally do. When we, yeah. when I was kind of preparing for this topic, there is, I wanted to share a personal story. And so my mom who's passed on now, she was a teacher and she was also, she had like crap tons of, you know, generational trauma. Surprise, surprise. If you're a human being, that's yeah often a thing. (laughs) So I remember growing up whenever there was like an assignment in school or a test, anything that was graded, the focus was always on the part I didn't get right. So even if I got 99% 
there was no acknowledgement, no celebration. The focus was, well, what was the 1% that you missed? And then get this, if I got 100%, the focus was on, well, were there bonus points you could have gotten? Oh my God. I know, I know. So, <laughs> so in doing my own work, I realized like, oh, well, isn't that interesting? There was a part of me very young through that. And it, you know, it wasn't like a one-time thing. It, it went on for academia yeah. where at, at a young age, I made this decision that that was, well, fuck it. Why would I even try if mm-hmm. perfect, if perfect isn't even good enough? Right. Like no matter how well I do, it's not enough. So fuck it. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> right. Yeah. And so, my mom, like later in her years, she was doing her own work and she actually apologized to me for, you know, raising me feeling like I needed to be perfect. But I really had to go in and unpack that because the fear there, the fear of failure, right, was so strong that it became, and I, and it's, it's crazy to think because I've accomplished some pretty amazing things Yeah, you have. in my life. Like when you look kind of, you know, just neutrally or arbitrarily, or, you know, at kind of like, wow, I did that. I did that. I, you know, I, all these things. And yet that, that non-starter was always there, if that makes sense. Yeah. 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 Well, and And, you know, I had, it was very strange because my mother was the ultimate, you know, my daughter is perfect no matter what, Mm. but my father was the, you're never good enough, no matter what you do. (laughs) And so Ah. I had this schizophrenic approach, right? Yeah. (laughs) Talk about dual identity. Yeah. More accurate, but (laughs) yeah, you know, my mother was the one who, you know, when they marked my grapes, my green grapes wrong on my kindergarten test she sent me in with green grapes to the teacher and said fix it because these are the only grapes she's ever had <laughs> she was just, oh that's who my oh. mother was you know? <laughs> yeah wow <laughs> yeah so you know i i was you know not that i could do no wrong because she did get frustrated with me sometimes but you know there was a an inherent mismatch between my parents and that was part mm-hmm. of the argument between them before mm-hmm. they got divorced was you know he was like, you don't discipline her. You don't, you know, you know, tell her how to do things right and blah, blah, blah. And she was like, you're too hard on her, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> they wow. were both right. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so I was like, wow. Okay. You know, so it was this push me, pull you constantly. Right. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I had the perfectionist thing too, because I was trying to please daddy. Right. Mm-hmm. And, you know, when my dad left, he really basically disappeared from my life. I heard from him three times a year. I saw him once a year if I was lucky, if we happened to be within driving distance. And we weren't always because my mother was military. So, so, you know, the need to make daddy happy was big for me. And, you know, it, it was a huge thing in my evolution because what I discovered over time, and this isn't a fear, fear of failure, because I, I went out and did the things I wanted to do because I had mom going, yay, go team on the sidelines, right? Mm-hmm. And that was a blessing for me. But at the same time, if things weren't working, my dad would be like, see, you should just go get a real job, quote unquote. And I'm like, hmm. And, you know, to, to his credit, he'd send me 500 bucks. <laughs> I was going to say, did you send cash? Did he'd send, send cash? cash, but he'd say, okay. time to go get a real job. And I'm like, you're an entrepreneur. Why don't you just help me instead of telling me I can't do it? Mm. And he just never did. And so the, you know, for a long time, I realized that I kept myself from being successful because the $500 was the only way my dad ever showed me love. Ah. And so if I wasn't successful, he could love me. Mm. But if I was successful, like Mm. I published a book, I got a book published with a a conventional publisher, Amicom books in the real estate industry, never read the book. He never read it. He Mm. never acknowledged that it was a success. He never did any of that. Right. And Mm. so when I was successful, I got no response. Mm. When I was unsuccessful, he would send me money and, and advice. Right. So you know, the, the unsuccessful was the way that I kept in touch with him. That was the only way that he would, could send me love. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, when he died in 2017, 
I was like, ah, oh, okay. I, you know, I had just realized like a year before that that was what was going on. And, mm-hmm. and probably not even a year, probably six months before. And I was starting to work on it. But when he died, I was like, well, pfft, that's done now. I don't have to worry about that. I can uh-huh. let that go. But, you know, it was, it was a big issue for me. My dad was kind of my big issue my whole life. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, parents, man, parents, uh-huh. they are the, they are the, the source of a lot of our challenges and their parents were a cho- source of a lot of their challenges and a lot of the reasons why they do the things they do. So, you know, uh-huh. they're human just like us and we can't, point, you know, I spent a lot of years pointing the finger. Oh my God. So many years pointing the finger at my dad going, you screwed me up. Ah, you're, I, I, you suck. I hate you. You know, I was so <laughs> angry for so how, long. How'd that work out for you? Yeah. Uh, well, I, you know, not so well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was really stuck in it for a long time. And, and the thing that turned the point that was turning point for me was that I had to stop saying you didn't do this and mm-hmm. start saying, I didn't get what I needed. When I stopped pointing the finger and blaming, and I came back to just the simplicity of I didn't get what I needed, yeah. it became much easier to do my work, yeah. right? Yeah. Because yeah. I was no yeah. longer stuck in the anger and the blame, and wow. I was no longer putting my power wherever you point your finger is where you put your power, yeah. right? So, so long as I was pointing my finger at my dad and going, ah, you know, all my power was there, and I felt it too, you know, because my dad was a rageaholic on top of it. So, you know, I was terrified of confronting him, terrified and terrified of, you know, most of his responses because, you know, um, you know, who knew when he was going to go off. So, you know, all of these things went into the mix. And so taking him out of the equation was the key for me to actually be able to move forward. Right. Yeah. yeah. And so, and- because when you say I didn't get what I needed, now you're in the power position to actually say, oh, I need something. I'm the one to get it for me. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So how can I give that to myself? Exactly. Yeah. 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 And, and that, you know, talking about failure, that permission to make mistakes, that, that realization that who you are has nothing to do with what you produce. Your value as a human being is completely independent of your failures, of your successes, of how other people see you. And you get to decide you get to decide, which is, yeah. it's, it's a power move to realize that. Yeah. Well, and, and this is the other piece is that you can never fail if you never give up. Mm-hmm. Right? You yeah. can, failures become setbacks if you keep going. Exactly. Right. Yeah. They're not failures. Failure means I stopped, I gave up. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, that has its downsides too, because that kept me in my marriage for much longer than it should have. <laughs> Because yeah. I didn't want to be a failure, but I finally realized that, you know, being a failure was a better idea than continuing my in, in the position I was in. And I was like, okay, I accept that I failed done. Right. And so, but, you know, in general, it works out that if you just see things as setbacks rather than failures and you just keep going, it's like, or, oh, or lessons been, yeah, or less exactly. or lessons, right? Well, setbacks become lessons when you, you, when you glean the gift in the challenge, yeah. every challenge yeah. comes with a gift. Every gift comes yeah. with a challenge. So when yeah. you sit down and look at the, the setback and you say, oh, this is what I learned from it, then it becomes a lesson. Mm-hmm. Right. So That's the key. Uh, And, and, you know, it's so one of the best things I ever heard was somebody said, oh, this cost me so much money. And somebody else said, that was the price you paid for the education you got. mm -hmm. And I'm like, I love that. Right. uh, Because it's true. This, that's the price that you paid for the education you got. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. You know, Mm -hmm. it might might have been a steep price, but if you learn from it, it's worth it. Right. (laughs) So that's the key is to, to recognize and glean the lessons from those setbacks. Yeah. Yeah. And I, you know, I think there's also a place where you can get to in your, in your journey where you recognize like it, it doesn't even, you don't get, you don't, you know, kind of get stuck or pitch a tent in the idea that it's a setback. So when you can really be, you know, kind of neutral to your experience, observing it. And yes, some is our, some, some of the things that we experience are to our preference and some are not to our preference. So if there's this neutrality to it and okay, so I'm experiencing something and it's not my preference, right. 
then how do I, with a sense of neutrality and curiosity, say, okay, well then if if I, and I personally believe that everything is happening for us, right? So if I can look at this as something that's happening for me, even if it's not my preference, right? You can go to the lesson a lot quicker. You can get curious about, well, what's what's in it for me, right? Is there is there something to learn? Is there growth? Am I being redirected into into something that's even better than than where this would have taken me? And I think that when you can do that, you don't spend the time and the energy in feeding the idea of it being a failure, right? You can kind of just like almost, it's not like you're kind of like, la, 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 you're not doing a spiritual bypass, no. but you you just can like really, really quickly go to a place where you're more empowered in how you're dealing with it. Yeah. So what you're describing in my words would be living in the experiential level rather than in the duality level. In duality, we are, you know, black and white, good and bad, up and down, you know, you and me back and forth, right? In experiential level, everything just is. And we're an acceptance of everything. And we are with it. You're just being with it. And then you're like, well, is this what I what I want or what I don't want? You know, what do I desire? Right? It's not Mm -hmm. being labeled as good or bad. It's being labeled as good or bad for me, right? It's being labeled as do I want it or not for me. And it's not even good or bad, even it's just just a preference or not a preference. Exactly. And so, you know, this is one of those, those things that I see a lot with people. And, and there's another piece, there was another piece in there that I wanted to say, what is it? Uh, la, 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 brain, brain, come on, brain. you can do it, I've had my coffee, where is it? It's only uh, Monday. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember now, it'll come screaming back the moment it'll you come. start saying something. Come. Yeah. So anyway, the, the upshot is, is that when you're standing in that space of acceptance, rather than in a space of judgment, right? Then you are more free to be able to make choices faster. That's what I was going to say. I found it. Okay. So there's a thing I talked to my students about and and the people watching on YouTube are going to get a better version of this than the people listening because it is kind of a visual. But if you, if you see a line down the center of the screen, right? And what you think of as, you know, this line is the path, right? The way, the optimal pathway, right? The thing that we're always trying to be on. I want to be on my spiritual don't, path. Don't, don't, don't. Right? Yes. <laughs> and so what happens is that if you are new to this, you're going to get off the path and you're going to get off the path a really long way. And then you're going to realize when you're really far from the path, you're going to go, oh my God, I'm off the path. And you're going to do all of this back and forth going, "Ah, I suck, I suck, I suck, I suck. I got off the path. I can't believe how off the path I am. I'm so stupid. Right. And then eventually you're going to get tired of of doing that. And then you're going to come back to the path where you started and you're going to walk a little further and then you're going to get off the path again and and you're going to get really far away. And you're going to, ah, I suck, I suck, I suck, right? And all of that. And and then you're going to make your way back. Now, somebody who is more experienced with staying on the path is going to notice faster and they're going to be off the path as often as the other person. Okay, I want you to be clear on that. They're going to be off the path as often as the other person. They're going to notice faster. They're going to go, oh, I'm off the path and they're going to come back and there's going to be no judgment, no blah, 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 no Mm. bitching and moaning and griping and complaining about how much you suck and you're not on the path and whatever. None of that. They're just going to get back on and then they're going to go off and they're going, oh, I'm off and come back and oh, I'm off and come back. And and they're just going to slalom the path instead of going off, falling down, getting mad, throwing things, you know, whatever, right? And then coming back. What I need to tell you is that every time you go into that self-judgment, you are actually in resistance to being back on the path. That is what that self-judgment is. Mm -hmm. It is a resistance pattern. So the sooner you can get out of that, the sooner you can get closer to the mastery level. Now you will, it will take you a longer time to notice that you're off the path because you're at, you're not in practice with it. You don't notice it as quickly. That's okay. You're just getting started. Just like a baby falls down periodically and has to get up again. They don't sit there and go, I suck. I can't walk. I'm supposed to be able to walk immediately. Ah, There's none of that because they understand that this is a process and they're just like, oh, I'm down. Let me get up. Oh, I'm down. Let me get up. Right. That's all they do. And that's mastery right there. Right. It's like, oh, I'm down. Let me get up. Right. So if we, if we let go of the resistance pattern of self-recrimination 
and then we just get back onto the path. That's the fastest way to learn how to stay in mastery of the process. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this is the other piece that we fear is our own self-recrimination around failure, right? Because that's what we do when we, when we fail, we, we project our internal recriminations, our internal judgments onto others by saying, oh, I can't fail because they're going to think badly of me. But in actuality, we're just going to beat the living crap out of ourselves for failing. It's like, well, maybe, maybe not so much for that. Maybe learn to be a little kinder to yourself and to recognize that it's an internal resistance pattern. And when, when we do that, because trying to hold something that is difficult and hold self-recrimination at the same time is very difficult. You know, it's sometimes impossible depending upon where you are. So, you know, I, I find when I'm having a hard time in life in general, that I will find myself saying, you can do it. Come on, Kelly, you can do it. You can do it. You can do it. Just keep swimming. Just keep just swimming. Keep swimming. <laughs> just keep swimming. It's okay. You got this. You got this. Right. And I will say this out loud to myself unconsciously, right? <laughs> I'm just like, you can do it. You can do it. It's okay. You can do it. Right. And so this is the sort of stuff that you want to program into your brain, right? We talked, no, I, I think this one will come in before that, but there's an episode coming up. We're pre-recording, so I, I don't know when anything is, but, but there's an episode coming up that we just recorded that is called The Giving Tree and Other Narcissistic Tales. And so The, the Giving Tree is a really horrible story, but... I had another childhood story that was super helpful for this, which is Thomas the train, I think is what it was. It's, it's, you know, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can, I know I can, I know I can, I know I can, right. It's that, that thing. And when you can program that into your brain, and that's what we do every day, we're programming our brains with what we're watching, what we're thinking, what we're having said to us and what we're saying to ourselves, we're programming our brain. So if you program your brain appropriately, you won't have that problem, right? You'll, you'll be able to have that self-support. So any final thoughts before we wrap up? Um, I think what can be helpful, so just a couple things I want to say is to fail fast and fail forward. So when yes. you do fail, do it fast because you're going to be able to use that to move yourself forward. And then also one of the things that I, that I did that was really supportive for me was I had a little sticky note on my computer that said progress, not perfection. Mm. So it's about yes. the progress and you're measuring the progress against your self. Yes. Yeah. So in, in our spiritual work, when I work with people doing higher level spiritual work, there's always this like, ah, oh, I've got to get it right. I've got to get it perfect. And I'm like, no, 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 fuck it up. Fuck it up hard. That's right. <laughs> That's, that's that what I tell you out, get that big spoon out. <laughs> that's right. You know, Mix it up. Hard and, and land on your face and then get up and, and figure out what you learned from it. Because if oh. you're afraid to screw it up, yeah. you will never do it. And yeah. so I'm like, embrace the failure and move through it. Mm -hmm. Give yourself permission to fail amazingly. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then all of the need for perfection goes away. So mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. my, that's my quick one is fuck it up, fuck it up hard. <laughs> that's what she said. <laughs> that's what she said. Oh no, we're not going there. Okay. <laughs> All right. I think that's enough for today then. <laughs> I think we, I think we just need to bring this in for a close. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. <laughs> So don't forget to like and subscribe and rate and all of the good things. Share with your friends if you're enjoying this. We really appreciate you. And don't forget what you focus on expands. What you intend is what you create. So choose wisely. Have a great one. We'll see you next time. So that's it for today's episode of Spirit Guides Podcast. Head on over to iTunes, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen and subscribe to the show. Every week, one lucky listener who subscribes and posts a review on iTunes will be entered into a drawing for a $10,000 value grand prize and a private reading with Kelly Sparta herself. Be sure to head on over to spiritguidespodcast.com and pick up a free copy of Kelly's gift and join us on the next episode. Oh, 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 oh,